Hey, this episode is brought to you by Jaybird, whose Vista 2 wireless earbuds are the holy grail for both my workouts and for my work. I move fast throughout my day, and these are the only earbuds that I've found that can keep up with a tough, sweaty training session, and then can take me right into a work call on Zoom without any struggles to connect. There's a mic on each earbud with wind protection. So if I'm taking a meeting on my bike erg or I'm walking around, which I highly recommend to stay active during your day, I'm still gonna be heard loud and clear. Most importantly, the Vista 2 earbuds stay in place comfortably through burpees, box jumps, double unders, running, and anything that I can throw at them. I sweat a lot and these earbuds can handle it all. I love the ability to get into the zone of my workouts with active noise cancellation mode or stay more aware of my surroundings when I'm at home with the kids or mountain biking with the surround sense feature. They automatically pause my music if I take out a bud so I never miss a beat. And if I ever lose my buds and the case, I can locate them with the Jaybird app. So if you're an always on the move person like me, the Vista 2 will keep up with 24 hours of battery life and wireless charging. You probably know what a huge bummer it is to be heading out for a workout only to realize your headphones are out of juice. But the Vista 2s have a five minute quick charge that can get you up to an hour of playtime really fast. They have literally thought of everything. So Jaybird is gonna hook you up with a 10% off Vista 2 earbud code. Use code Marcus when you visit the link in the description below. Go grab a pair, get 10% off, hit some FBB workouts like the one we're gonna hit today. Oh goodness, you're gonna feel those lunges tomorrow. You'll be thinking to me every time you sit down on the toilet this weekend, have I got a little rump pump for you. Building glutes is all the craze these days. We've got entire social media channels dedicated to butts, glutes, and all things backside. Programs are all over the internet that promise to get you a bigger butt and men and women alike are racing to grab them. Nobody wants a flat ass. The bigger the bump, the bigger the curve, the better. Thanks, Kim. But are these programs really that special? Do any of them really have the secret to great glute training? I mean, how different is your butt than any other muscle on your body? Does it need some special sets and reps to actually grow and get stronger? Or can we apply many of the same principles that we use for other muscles of the body? Furthermore, I've seen plenty of glute programs out there that love to highlight a wide variety of equipment. But what if you don't have all that special equipment, those special machines that are out there? I mean, the past 18 months have shown me that finding ways to make minimal equipment effective and interesting can be the difference between staying consistent with your goals or falling off the fitness roadmap. So let's jump into eight movements and how to use them with functional bodybuilding principles to get a ton of mileage out of just a couple dumbbells and a band. And these are going to put the hurt on your glutes. So first, we're going to look at the four primary movements that I'm going to address today. We're going to enhance these movements with long time under tension. If you want to see how to put all these moves today together into a full workout, be sure to go to the description in the link below and grab the free PDF that I've put together that gives you sets, reps, tempos, rest periods, everything you need to go out and get a great workout today. For the rear foot elevated split squat, also known as the Bulgarian split squat, here are a couple notes. First, to get set up, I want you to take three steps out from the bench or the surface that you're gonna place your rear foot on. That's the distance you wanna be from the bench. You're gonna also determine whether you like to put the top of your foot onto the bench, like you're seeing me do, or if it feels more comfortable to put your toe down on the top of that bench. I want you to lower to the bottom position, drop your knee to the ground, get comfortable before you pick up any external load like dumbbells. It's gonna help you get into the right position without losing your balance. As you lower on each repetition, I want you to aim to lower your body slightly backwards as you go down. We're gonna be using a 3-1-X-0 tempo, which means you're taking a full three seconds to move smoothly to the bottom of each rep. There's no rest at the top of these repetitions, 
and only a brief pause at the bottom to get reset before coming back up fast. Slowing the eccentric contraction is going to help you to create a great mind-muscle connection as well as break down those gluteal tissues through that long stretch while you're under load. The brief pause at the bottom when the glutes are in the stretch position is also going to add a variable that will demand that you work on your force production to get up out of the bottom so you can be building some strength at the same time. Okay, next we're moving on to the single leg hip thrust. For setup on this, make sure you find an elevated surface that's working for your body size. Medicine balls can work, low benches work great, or even your couch if you're at home can work well too. The leg that you're working with is on the floor and that heel of that foot is gonna stay really connected to the ground. And that's what you're gonna be focusing on driving up through that heel to elevate your hips. If you find yourself losing balance or you need a little bit more balance, then just take the heel of the non-working leg and drop it to the floor. That's totally acceptable. Try not to commit this fault, which is overarching your back. Try and keep your rib cage down instead and stare down at your hips. For this tempo, 40X1, I like maintaining a pause in this exercise at the top since this is when your glutes are in this super shortened and fully contracted state. And you'll be really able to make this great mind-muscle connection when you're fully contracted if you take a moment to pause at the top of each rep. All right, third up is the Banded Sumo Romanian Deadlift. So to get set up, I want you to place your feet just outside your shoulders. Adding the band resistance makes the heaviest portion of this lift at the top when the glutes are fully contracted. This is where you should feel and be the strongest in the exercise. A lighter load at the bottom when the band is more relaxed will hopefully allow you to get a better stretch without feeling vulnerable at the bottom of the repetition. When doing Romanian deadlifts, what we want to do is we want to find a fixed angle for your knees to stay at. You don't want to let them flex beyond that. They don't need to be perfectly straight for this exercise. Upwards of about 20 degrees of bend in the knee is actually pretty good. The tempo I want you performing this exercise at is 4-0-X-0. That means there's no pauses at the top or the bottom, so you're constantly moving. We're simply going to be leveraging a lot of slow eccentric contractions and that's going to help build metabolic stress to get those hypertrophy adaptations we're looking for. All right, the fourth and final primary movement we're covering is the hand supported single leg RDL. So we're going to find a supportive surface like a wall, a squat rack, or a chair to hold on to for this exercise. This support is going to allow you to build better mind muscle connections in the glutes since you won't have to be thinking about balance and you can really focus on the primary mover. I want you to hold your dumbbell in the hand that's opposite your working leg that is on the ground. To make sure we're not just feeling this movement in our hamstrings and we can get some glute activation going on, I really want you to focus on pushing your hips back as you lean forward. This is going to place a greater stretch on the glute muscles and make sure that they're contributing to helping you hinge forward and back up. The tempo on this exercise is 4-0-X-1. That means there's a brief pause at the top, and that's all we want for this exercise. It's simply there to help us reset and maintain good balance so that we can focus on this good quality, slow, eccentric lowering. Okay, these next four exercises are making up the supplementary supersets in the training examples that I've provided in the free workout PDF that you can grab in the description link below. The time under tension will be shorter with these supplementary exercises, but we're gonna use higher rep counts and then shorten rest periods to achieve metabolic stress that we're after. Okay, we're starting with the dumbbell side plank clamshell. You're gonna set this dumbbell to rest right on the side of your top hip. And as you push yourself up, the idea is that you're gonna drive both knees apart as hard as you can. At the top, you are definitely going to feel, and you should feel, kind of the outer or side glutes really, really working hard for you. The tempo is 1-0-X-1. 
on this particular exercise. Adding in a pause at the top of this movement provides a powerful moment to cue the mind-muscle connection. It's virtually impossible to not feel your glutes working on this. Like I said, in particular, you will feel the top outside of your glutes firing. Some might say this is the ultimate side butt exercise, and I would absolutely agree with that. All right, next up is the seated dumbbell good morning. So when you sit down to perform this exercise, you should be seated at a height such that your hip is roughly at a 90 degree angle or slightly above that. Make sure your feet are slightly out in front of your knees as well. As you hinge forward, I want you to mentally cue yourself to try and bring your belly towards the floor rather than your chest. There are two loading options here, behind the neck or dumbbells below the shoulders. Find what makes you feel the most comfortable and confident as well, which of those two loading positions help you feel your glutes the most. With the tempo of 2101, we're keeping things slow and controlled without any pauses in this exercise. I've intentionally removed the X in the concentric like the other exercises have because I don't want you to attempt to move really fast on this particular movement. On the way up, I want you to stay controlled with a one second concentric. The reason being, this exercise can make people feel slightly vulnerable in their low back, and the last thing I want you to do is get a tweak and sideline your training. Okay, third up in the supplementary movement category is the curtsy drop lunge. You're gonna choose a box height or a step that is about six to eight inches in height. When you step back and behind your working leg, you don't need to be too aggressive with the angle. Just step back and behind your working leg far enough that you feel the outside of your hip and the outside of your glute get a bit of a stretch. This again is the portion of the glute that we're gonna be trying to hit and target, that side or lateral glute area. At a tempo of 10x1 for 15 to 20 reps, the key here is that there's really no pauses. Now, if you find yourself trying to rush to get through a 10x0 tempo, then it's okay to slow down. Look, I don't want you to lose the mind-muscle connection here with that lateral glute for the sake of just going fast and keeping up with the tempo. Okay, last but not least in the supplemental movement category is the hand-supported Russian step-up. For this, we're trying to find a box or a bench height that is slightly lower than where your knee comes when you're standing. We're looking for support from the hand to guide your balance rather than to help assist you up. So whatever you're holding on to, be it a wall, squat rack, or a chair, try not to pull up on it or push up on it, but rather just use it for balance. When we raise the opposing knee as high as we can at the top of each rep, it's gonna help the working glute to contract a bit more fully. So be sure to drive that knee up tall and with your posture, stand as tall as you can at the top of the rep. Similar to the curtsy drop lunge, we're using a 1-0-X-O tempo. And what we covered prior was that the key thing is that there's no pauses in this movement. But as I said before, don't rush this one and lose mind-muscle connection. You can always slow down the tempo slightly if needed. So now that we've covered the eight movements, let's talk a little bit about why these work. And before we jump into that, I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge one particular industry leader in glute training. That person is Brett Contreras, otherwise known as the glute guy. He has literally pioneered the space of glute training for the past two decades. And if you want to go check out his resources and take a deep dive into glutes, then I encourage you to go check out his various social media channels. But let me tell you what I've learned from Brett in the past several years. Well, it's basically that with dedication to a specific body part, you can see wild results. Again, check out his social media to see some of the transformations. But simply to build a nice backside, what you need is one, to get strong, two, to train sufficient volume, and three, vary your movement patterns accordingly. So for those of you who wanna know more of the why behind your training, here's what goes into building effective hypertrophy workouts, even with minimal equipment. Number one, exercise selection. See, not all exercises are created equal. Some exercises are best when they can be paired with heavy mechanical loading. On the other hand, certain exercises are best when performed at lower loads with higher volume. Some are useful when you want to maximally stretch, 
the muscle tissue under load and others are useful when you want to try maximally loading the tissue in its shortened and maximally contracted state. Lastly, I have always found that no single exercise works for every single person. What might feel great to you feels useless or minimally effective to another person. This is where coaching and training experience comes into play, right? Finding a broad enough list of movements that will benefit just about every trainee comes through trial and error. After 20 plus years of training and coaching, I'm just getting more and more refined with my own list. Okay, principle number two is the mind-muscle connection. Hey Marcus, what muscles should I be feeling? So this question in my early years of coaching used to get me to give a very quick and direct answer, right? They're doing a deadlift, hey, you should feel your hamstrings and back. You're doing a squat, yeah, your quads and your hips. You're doing a bench press, your chest and your triceps. And after a number of years of coaching and having this question asked of me, I started to wonder, how does somebody not realize that their quads, chest, back is supposed to be working in this exercise? How can they not feel that? This is when the concept of mind-muscle connection was really cemented into my head as a coach. My decade of training experience, flexing and posing in the mirror as a teenager, reading all the exercise books I could get my hands on, websites available in the late 90s and early 2000s, all of this had given me an unfair advantage. See, I knew from thousands of reps, flexes, and articles exactly what was supposed to be working. My brain and muscles were like one during most parts of my training. But I do remember when I first started working out, I had to look at pictures on the machines at the gym just to figure out what I was supposed to be feeling. And so here were my clients asking me to be their in-person machine photograph with the highlighted body parts on it. You know what I'm talking about. Why? Because they hadn't built their own mind-muscle connections yet. So how do we build this? Slowing things down, adding in pauses, getting in sufficient reps, and verbal cueing. These are all tools we use in coaching to help people learn the mind-muscle connection. All of these things will rapidly increase the time to making connections between muscles and your brain. Your backside in particular is a tough area to build a connection with. See, if you don't see the muscles when you stare in the mirror, I found that people have a much harder time learning how to contract and connect those areas of the body. That's why the slow tempos in these workouts really help. Okay, principle number three is time under tension. This is perhaps the best tool we have in the FBB toolbox to manipulate the outcomes of resistance training. Lifting weights from point A to point B, it only tells half the story, what the outcome will be. I wanna encourage you not to be so focused on the number of reps, the number of sets that you can complete a given exercise with. Instead, your tempo is gonna dictate the time that your body is actually under the tension of the weight and is the king of all lifting variables. So if you're new to tempo, then here's a quick breakdown of how it works. A tempo prescription always has four digits. The first digit describes the lowering phase or the lengthening contraction. The second digit, it describes the time spent at the bottom. Are you pausing or are you not? The third digit represents the upward phase or the shortening contraction. And then the fourth digit is the time spent at the top of the lift is there a pause or is there not? Some examples would be a back squat performed at a 4-1-X-1 tempo. That would be four seconds down, a one second pause, then up fast, followed by a one second pause at the top. Or the other example would be a press, an exercise that already starts at the bottom and you have to lift up as the first movement to initiate the exercise. So a press at 2-1-X-1 means we're gonna explode up or go fast up. We're gonna pause for a second overhead. We're gonna lower in two seconds back down to the shoulders and then repeat with a paw after a pause at the shoulders for one second. With tempo prescriptions, we can bias muscle hypertrophy and strength even with minimal equipment by elongating these eccentric phases of the contractions. You will see slow lowering phases in many of the glute exercise I'm presenting today. Slow eccentrics can help you build better mind-muscle connections, which we've already talked about as extremely important to muscle hypertrophy training. Additionally, adding in purposeful pauses at particular positions in the exercise can also enhance that mind-muscle connection too.
Okay, and coming to the last point, which is metabolic stress. So when we're dealing with minimal equipment, we will often lose the ability to leverage the heavy mechanical loads to create the type of stress on the muscle that is very effective for delivering hypertrophy and strength gains. So that's why we have to turn to metabolic stress as an alternative training stress that we'll want to pull the lever on in order to get your glutes to strengthen and grow even with minimal tools. I really hesitate to oversimplify, but if you could imagine for a second that you're doing a set of squats and you start to cross that point where your legs really start to burn and scream. This is the point at which metabolic stress is kicking in. It is often the result of the local muscles being asked to do a lot of work in a short amount of time. Metabolites start to spill out of the tissue, impact the local soft tissue environment. The local pH may start to change and your muscles feel like they're burning. Now, like I said, this is a gross oversimplification. We should not always be chasing the burn in every set, but in situations with minimal equipment, it may be a useful way to stress the muscles into growth. There are four ways that we tend to manipulate this variable in the accompanying workouts. Number one is tempo and having longer time under tension. Number two is repetition volume, more contractions in a given set. Number three would be supersetting. This is implementing supersets of exercises back and forth that would target similar muscle groups that we can use and have a compounding metabolic stress effect. And fourth, we use rest periods. So with shortened rest periods between exercises, the muscle tissue can be under recovered and as a result, build metabolic stress as you're going back and forth between exercises. As I said before, you're gonna find these eight movements put together into two dumbbell only glute workouts that you can grab for free from the description below using all the principles from functional bodybuilding for a rump pump that you can use anytime. I really hope today illuminated some of the minimalist exercises that can be very potent and powerful for your glute training. And I hope that you're walking away from this video with a better sense of how particular training principles can help make your minimalist training more effective than it has been in the past. As always, thank you for joining me. If you have comments, please drop them below. I love to engage with you gives us great ideas for the future and more content to come to you. We'll see you next time.